To mark the 200th anniversary of the founding of the town of Greece, the Greece Historical Society presents a bicentennial snapshot. Each week, we take a look at a particular aspect of Greece history. Today, we look back at the horrific fire at the Holiday Inn in Greece, in which 10 people died. Ridge Road Fire Department has battled many a fire, large and small, but never anything like the Holiday Inn fire on November 26, 1978. On Sunday, November 26, 1978, there were 200 people in 91 guest rooms at the Holiday Inn in Greece. Among the guests were visitors from Ontario, Canada, a bus tour here to take advantage of Thanksgiving weekend's shopping specials, members of two wedding parties, a John Marshall alumna in town for her reunion, and attendees at the hotel's Saturday night singles party. Around 2.30 a.m. that frosty Sunday morning, a fire started among the paper products and towels stored in a closet tucked under a first floor stairway. The blaze spread quickly up the stairs where the fire doors had been propped open, raced down quarters, ignited the ceilings, and invaded the roof. Two off-duty firefighters, one from the Grease Ridge Fire Department, the other an Albion Fire Department fire chief, each driving on Ridge Road on the way home from a different workplace, spotted the orange glow of the flames approximately eight minutes after the fire started. The Grease firefighter radioed in the fire from his car and they both entered the building to start evacuating guests. Other people were calling from nearby pay phones to report the fire. 911 wasn't instituted until 1986 in Rochester, even later in Greece, and of course cell phones hadn't been invented yet. Grease Ridge, assisted by the Barnard and North Greece Fire Departments, as well as the City of Rochester, fought the blaze for two hours with more than 125 firefighters. Ten ambulances were needed at the scene. Ridge Road had command of the scene. As such, it told the assisting companies where to deploy their firefighting equipment. As you can see on this map, the blue lines are hoses from the water mains to the trucks and truck to truck. The green lines represent the hoses that were in the firefighters' hands. A large contingent of firefighters, the deluge set, operating from pumper 253 near where the fire started, sprayed torrents of water on the building. The red arrows represent the direction the fire was traveling, outward from the origin to the shaded reddish oranges zone where the fire could be stopped from consuming the rest of the structure. Rescue crews piloted 170 guests, most of them still in their night clothes and many barefoot, outside into a night with a 16 degree wind chill. By 4.30 the fire was out, but the building was a total loss. A few guests leaped from second and third story windows to save themselves. 34 people were injured, including 17 firefighters. Tragically, 10 people perished in the fire. They were Rubina Ruth Cushanan, age 81, and her daughter Ruby Cushanan, age 61, from York, Ontario, Canada. Four people from Etobicoke, Ontario, Margaret Duncan, age 57, 67-year-old Edward Farley and his 62-year-old wife Lorene, and Pamela Sagroff, age 30, and from Bramalee, Ontario, Hujay Sundu, age 30. Joyce Plum, age 42, from Arlington, Virginia, who had attended her 25th high school reunion from John Marshall High School the day before. Stephen Ford, age 29, from Ypsilanti, Michigan, who was in Rochester for his best friend's wedding, and from Pompano Beach, Florida, Nancy Garrett, age 26. The hotel had a host of structural faults that contributed to the easy spread of the conflagration. The primary factors that led to the fatalities in this incident were the combination of the highly combustible interior finish and unprotected openings that existed in the stairway. There was only one vertical firewall between the two wings and the firewalls in the buildings did not extend to the roof allowing the fire to rip through the top floor of each wing. It also lacked fire prevention equipment. There were few smoke detectors. There was no sprinkler system. The alarm system wasn't connected to the Grease Ridge Fire Department or any other security agency. The alarm system consisted only of one bell in the middle of each of the two wings' five floors. The alarm didn't have a distinctive sound nor was it loud enough. Guests didn't recognize it as a fire alarm. They thought it was a phone or an alarm clock. 
Furthermore, when hotel employees realized the alarms were ringing, they rushed to get people out, but no one remembered to call the fire department. As news of the fire spread, the police department was flooded with calls. One volunteer, Doug Warboys, recalls that after the fire, he arrived home at 10.30 a.m., grabbed a little sleep, and returned to work the noon to 11 p.m. shift at the police dispatch desk. We had callers from throughout the United States and Canada. The farthest away, I think, was Puerto Rico. We referred most of the Holiday Inn inquiry calls to the front desk officer who was assigned to take all of those types of calls. Next day, they had a special line set up for the further calls. You hear things like that happening in other places, but you never expect one like that in your own town. That day was a busy day with all those calls along with calls from normal situations that occur day to day. That day was a very somber day for us dispatchers and all the people involved in this fire. Although at first it was said that the fire was accidental, Police Chief Gerald Phelan, when speaking to reporters at the time, said that his gut told him the fire was nonetheless suspicious due to its speed and intensity. Phelan invited John Stickever, a New York City Fire Department investigator, essentially wrote the book on fire investigation training to examine the fire scene. Stickover concluded that an accelerant of some kind had been used in starting the fire and declared it arson, and the 10 deaths were now 10 murders. Phelan formed a special arson task force, operating a command center out of the Poplar Motel down the road from the fire site. The team of 23 local and state investigators conducted more than 400 interviews in the days after the fire. They settled on five persons of interest, but didn't have enough evidence to bring charges against anyone. The two main suspects were the Grease Ridge firefighter who had radioed in the fire, and a man who, quote, had lived in two apartments that had caught fire, then using insurance coverage, moved temporarily to the Holiday Inn. However, he had a confrontation with a staff member shortly before the fire and was booted out of the hotel. In the fire's aftermath, Assemblyman Roger Roebuck, who represented Greece, co-sponsored a bill in 1980 requiring hotels and motels with more than 30 rooms to have smoke detectors in every room and in hallways. It passed unanimously in the Assembly, and after it was passed by the Senate, was signed into law by Governor Hugh Carey. Although an open case, it had laid dormant until 2010, when the Greece Police Department, first under Chief Todd Baxter and then under his successor Patrick Phelan, gave new life to the investigation. Everything was re-examined and witnesses were interviewed again. They concluded that the firefighter was the arsonist. The Greece Police Department submitted their report to the Monroe County District Attorney in 2015. The DA, however, was not convinced that there was enough evidence to prosecute anyone. In the years since the 1978 fire, the science of arson has evolved, and she didn't feel that it was still conclusive without a doubt that it was even arson. So the families and friends of ten souls lost in that fire may never see anyone brought to account. The Holiday Inn Fire of 1978 was not only the deadliest fire in the history of the town of Greece, but in all of Monroe County. Thanks for joining us this week. Next week, we pay tribute to the greatest generation. This is Maureen Whalen inviting you to join us next Tuesday for another Bicentennial Snapshot presented by the Greece Historical Society. Want to learn more from the Greece Historical Society and Museum? Then click that subscribe button for more content and hit that bell icon to get notified when there's more Bicentennial Snapshots. You can visit us on the web at greasehistoricalsociety.org. 
You can find us on Facebook at Greece Historical Society. You can follow us on Twitter at Greece NY History. And you can stop in at the Greece Historical Society at 595 Long Pound Road.